The West Australian government has just announced some utterly insane decisions. Well, when I say insane, I, I don't mean that necessarily in a bad way. But what they're saying is they're going to increase energy deployment by a factor of five. They're saying that Western Australia will need more energy than you can possibly dream of. So they're going to build out so much wind, solar and battery storage that there will be more power capacity per person in Western Australia than any other place on planet Earth. Now, personally, I think they need to go and talk to the Californian government to get a perspective on maybe what they really should do. Here's what's going on. Here's what I think they're missing. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Western Australia is a little bit like Texas. It's the biggest state in Australia by far. It pretty much relies mostly on mining and agriculture for its industry. Now, it plans a switch to solar and storage as part of an incredible 50 gigawatt green energy boom, which is kind of um, seems to be a bit over the top. Now, I believe there's a reason for why they're doing this, but I think that might not add up in the way that they think. However, Western Australia is planning to do all this within 20 years. Now, it will hit 100% renewables way before 20 years is up, but it wants to just keep going and going and going and making more and more power. The new capacity they say is needed, or the Labor government says it's needed, to supply an anticipated surge in demand for power from electrification, new green industries, critical minerals and renewable hydrogen as it has allocated $126 million in the coming year to kickstart work on the network needs for its ambitious plans. Basically, it wants to become an energy exporter. It wants to export clean hydrogen. It wants to export whatever energy it can. It believes it can become a global energy powerhouse, sort of like the new Saudi Arabia, but of hydrogen instead of oil. The initial modeling expects an additional 7.2 gigawatts of new industry electricity demand over the next two decades. That would require 51.1 gigawatts of new generation and storage capacity. That's 10 times the current amount currently being used. The demand assessment reports suggest that half of that anticipated new demand will emerge in the next decade. Hence the need to fast track the planning for up to 4,000 kilometers of new transmission works and to create new renewable energy hubs in the north, south and east. Now it's worth keeping in mind that in Western Australia mines, many mines now are beginning to be powered completely by their own energy. They simply create it where they are. Rather than building out like a power network to the mine, they just put wind, solar, and battery storage basically where that mine is and can create their own power. It's very, very cost effective considering the massive declines in the cost of those build outs now versus say 10 years ago. Considering mining is so important to the Western Australian economy, I believe that's what they plan to do. Mine everything they can. Just mine, 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 using renewable energy. It is the modeling of what the state could build in terms of new energy capacity that catches the eye, says reneweconomy.com.au. They say that particularly as the government plans to retire the rest of its state-owned coal fleet by 2030, it will mean that all of the state's energy will come from renewables. And this massive increase will also, of course, come from renewables. The report says the overwhelming majority of the new generation capacity is large scale wind and solar, 41.8 gigawatts. And the reason it says that it's gonna do it with wind and solar is because they are the most commercially viable technologies. To put this into perspective, the state's entire large scale generation capacity in 2022 was 5.9 gigawatts with just 1.2 gigawatts of this being large scale wind and solar, and less than 150 megawatts of this being solar. But the Western Australian government says that large scale solar paired with long duration energy storage will be the most cost efficient form of firmed renewable generation by far. It says this combination is expected to be built across the Network, even in the south of the state, where it suggests that up to 11.1 gigawatts of solar could be installed. Now, keep in mind that 
This is basically a desert. The majority of the country is a desert. It's completely unusable. There's land just doing nothing. So there is capacity here to build out more energy than you could possibly dream of because not only is it a desert, it's also one of the sunniest places in the world. Its modeling indicates that wind generation built should occur across the network to access diverse wind profiles over the day and year to maximize the availability of renewable energy generation at any one time. Now, I lived in this area for two years. In fact, I lived in numerous places in Western Australia for two years. And I've got to tell you, it was a very windy place. Perfect for energy generation. Very hot, but not too hot. And very sunny for so many days of the year. Plus, very windy. The storage modeling is interesting because it considers two, four, and eight hour duration lithium ion batteries powered by pumped hydro for longer duration storage after 2030. Although it says that might be difficult due to the state's topography, it doesn't have any hills and it doesn't have a whole lot of water. It says, though, if these pumped hydro technologies do not eventuate, larger quantities of shorter duration storage technologies such as batteries may be required. So the scale of this what they're looking at doing is enormous. I don't know of any other place in the world that has such incredible ambitions. You've got to give them some credit for these ambitions. Obviously, they think they can make billions of dollars in this new hydrogen economy. That's what they're angling for here, creating green hydrogen and selling it to whether that be shipping companies or whether that be steel companies or whether that be long haul trucking, whatever it may be, they believe they can turn their economy into one of the wealthiest in the world by creating enough energy to power half of Australia when they only need a fraction of that. Now, this is a testament to the opportunities from the state's wind and solar resources, its mineral riches, and the potential for green industry and green hydrogen production. Here's what they said. An expanded grid is the most cost-efficient way of supporting decarbonisation as it can reach further for wind and solar. Very weirdly though, Port makes no mention of rooftop solar or electric cars. Now, rooftop solar is already a big player on the state's grid. And obviously in the future, everyone will have an electric car. Everyone. Uh, I mean, you know, okay, 99%. It's simply a matter of time. The question isn't if, the question is when. So with all these batteries, with millions of car batteries, and millions of solar panels on people's roofs, you would think that the government would take those into its equations and work out how they will affect the grid, just like California is doing right now with its energy arbitration that it has with Tesla's battery network, with Tesla's solar panel owners. But it doesn't actually make any mention of that issue. It doesn't seem to have factored those things into its report in any way at all, which I find kind of strange. But it does say this, electrification of industries, transport and homes is key to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Western Australia has some of the best and most reliable renewable energy resources on the planet. But having world leading renewable energy is only one piece of the puzzle. It needs to be connected to where it will be used. Now, Perth also has some, or Western Australia also has some of the biggest gold mines in the world. And they're planning on sending a lot of this energy out to the gold mines to extract more gold. This could be one other area they're angling for. Extraction of resources, minerals for batteries, lithium, iron, and other metals, along with the extraction of more gold. What do you think about all this? Do you think it makes sense? to create five times more energy than you actually need in anticipation for being able to use that, en that energy to create exponential wealth. Now, I think that's what they're doing. And it actually makes a lot of sense. The only part that doesn't make sense is that they're not factoring in rooftop solar on residential homes and the electric cars sitting there waiting to take in that excess energy from the solar and send it back into the grid. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.